Well, I'd like to start by asking you to close your eyes and think of the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word amphibian. Now, I suspect for many it'll bring to mind a frog, and it might be something whimsical and iconic, like maybe Kermit the Frog, or serene, like a frog on a pond. And for some, I suspect it may even be disturbing, bringing to mind that formal and soaked frog from high school. Now, I would like you to think of a world without amphibians. <clears throat> Is that world very different from the world that you live in now? Well, it's hard for us to imagine that these slimy little creatures could have much impact on our world, that our lives with or without them would go on in much the same way. In a survey uh, conducted by the University of Arizona, people were asked to assign a value to eight groups of species, and these groups consisted of birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, plants, invertebrates, and microorganisms. And the values were based on given factors for each group, uh, like their ecological importance, the complexity of the animals that made up that group, their physical attractiveness, and also how important it was to conserve those animals. Well, amphibians ranked near the bottom along with microorganisms and invertebrates, so you're probably not alone in thinking that your world wouldn't be greatly changed in the absence of amphibians. So why is that? Well, typically when we first engage with animals, we do so on a superficial level. And because amphibians aren't particularly cute or cuddly, and in some instances not typically beautiful, um, and to the casual observer, they appear to just sit, eat a fly or two, produce numerous offspring, and get eaten by other animals. It seems pretty simple and pretty insignificant. Now, <clears throat> I felt the same, I didn't feel the same way, but I didn't give much thought to amphibians either when I started, especially when I started out in college and began planning my career in science. I was interested in charismatic species and hoped to one day study uh, primates in the wild. I wanted to be the next Goodall or Fossey. However, all of that changed when I began working at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History as a student with Tim Matson and working on as many amphibian projects. And I have to tell you, I was hooked. So hooked, in fact, that I devoted my career as an ecologist to the study of amphibians. And while they may not make a great first impression, they are far from insignificant and they are far from simple. In fact, they, have, they inhabit almost every habitat on the planet and in some of the most remarkable ways. And this is evidenced by their amazing diversity from frogs, toads, salamanders, amphiumas, and Sicilians. And they can be beautiful. And they can even be cute. <laughs> And they can be musical. <laughs> Those are the boys calling to the girls. <laughs> and in these ways, they enrich our experience with nature. But this is by no means the extent of their contributions. Amphibians are vital to the balance and functioning of our global environment. For starters, they're major consumers of insects, especially those that we consider pests, like mosquitoes and their larvae. 
One study estimated that a population of 1,000 northern cricket frogs, now this is a tiny little frog, about an inch, maybe an inch and a half long, 1,000 of these tiny little frogs was capable of consuming roughly 4.8 million insects per year. Now in turn, amphibians are one of the most important food sources in their ecosystems. A recent study in the Ozarks estimated that the biomass of salamanders alone was roughly 200 metric tons in a 1,000 square mile region. Now let me put this in perspective. The total biomass of just salamanders roughly equaled the total biomass of the entire population of white-tailed deer in that same ecosystem. And this fact alone makes them vitally important to energy flow and nutrient cycling in these ecosystems. So the more we learn about amphibians, the more fascinating and important they become. They possess abilities that are equaled only by our fictional superheroes. So if you like science fiction, these are definitely your animals. For example, the African hairy frog has sharp bones in the toes of its feet that it punctures the skin with, producing claws that it uses in defense. And not to be outdone, the Spanish rib newt has improved on this defense. It expands its ribs, which puncture the skin, exposing sharp rib bones that are coated with toxic skin secretions. And this is only the beginning. Some amphibians are capable of speeding up or delaying maturation. And certain salamanders can even forego attaining adulthood altogether and remain in the juvenile form throughout their life, which is why they are affectionately referred to as the Peter Pans of the amphibian world. Others <clears throat> have adapted to breathe without lungs, instead using dense capillary networks in their mouth and skin to capture oxygen from the atmosphere. <clears throat> And it is these unique and diverse abilities that make them so important to human medicine because they hold the key to so many medical breakthroughs and also greater insight into our own bodies. And most notable of these is their ability to regenerate tissue. Amphibians, particularly salamanders, have the ability to regenerate not only entire limbs, but also portions of complex organs and structures like heart, lungs, spinal cord, even pieces of the brain that have been damaged. By understanding and being able to duplicate the mechanisms that underlie these abilities holds enormous potential in the field of human regenerative medicine and can be used in the treatment of traumatic wounds, spinal cord injuries, the regrowth of lost nerves. Other amphibians, like a few of our own native frogs, like the wood frog here, they are capable of freezing in the winter and thawing in the spring. Now think about that. They're capable of freezing and thawing living tissue. This has major implications in organ transplantation because currently we cannot successfully freeze organs without damaging the tissue. But by understanding how these animals are able to accomplish this, we may in the future be able to store organs at least for short periods of time. Additionally, amphibians produce a wide range of novel chemical compounds in their skin that have led to the development of countless medicinal drugs with many more yet to be discovered. One of these, or some of these, actually have antibiotic properties that speed wound healing and may be effective against antibiotic resistant bacteria. Another compound is a proven painkiller that is 200 times stronger than morphine, but without the addictive side effects. 
and others show promise in the treatment of diseases like Alzheimer's, diabetes, even cancer by slowing the growth of tumors. Unfortunately, despite having existed on this planet for 350 million years and through five mass extinction events, amphibians are now facing their own potential decline from existence. In fact, they are experiencing some of the most rapid declines and greatest losses of any other vertebrate group. And the causes are many. Habitat loss and degradation, toxins in the environment, climate change, overexploitation. The reasons are many. But one thing is certain. These losses are being driven by human activities. We are responsible. And with these losses, so too will be lost their many contributions to our world. A vital link in our global ecosystem will be broken and our planet will be irreversibly changed. But this does not have to be a certainty. We do have the ability to bring about the change necessary to turn this around and at least save some of these from extinction. And you can start simple. Everyone must play a role. We need to rethink how we use this planet. And it can be simple. For many, it can just start by getting out and experiencing the natural world. And engaging and connecting with nature helps us have a shift in our attitudes. And going from there, you then can make changes in your own environment. Don't introduce harmful chemicals like herbicides and pesticides into your lawns or gardens. Also protect habitat that already exists on your property. Don't alter habitat. Try to leave it wild if you can. You can also create habitat by building a pond, but let nature populate it. Also, you could get closer to the science by participating in a citizen science program or a bio blitz. And you can help scientists gather information about amphibian populations in your area. And lastly, support programs aimed at protecting natural areas and also aimed at amphibian conservation. These animals are worth every effort. And if we continue to undervalue their role in our planet, it will come at a cost, and one that we cannot afford. So let me ask you again, can you imagine a world without amphibians? <laughs>